Okay, so this scenario says we have an airplane that's flying on a flight path that will take it directly over a radar tracking station while its elevation remains constant at six miles. If the distance from the plane to the radar tracking station is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour, when the distance to the station is 10 miles, what is the speed of the plane? Okay, so here's what we're looking at. We've got our little tracking station down here. We've got a plane. Uh, let's see here. We'll just say that the plane is over here in the air, and this is about as good as my planes get. Um, so it is flying towards this, but its elevation is remaining constant at 6 uh, miles. So since that's remaining constant, I'm going to write that on my picture and I don't have to change anything. Now it talks about the distance from the plane to the tracking station. Anytime you're talking about a distance, unless they specify otherwise, you're talking about the direct distance from that object to the other object. So that would be that hypotenuse of that right triangle. Um, let's see here. So this is changing, so I need to give it a variable. So I'm distance, we usually use S for distance. And uh, this distance up here, the horizontal distance at the top is also changing, so I'm going to give it a variable of X. The vertical distance is not changing. That's the height of the airplane that it, they said was staying constant at 6 miles. If the distance from the plane to the radar tracking station is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour, um, so that means dS over dt is negative 400 because it's decreasing when the distance is 10 miles, so s is 10, what is the speed of the point? So let's see, let's um, set up the Pythagorean theorem. Anytime you deal with a right triangle, you're almost always going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, we've got x squared plus uh, 6 squared is equal to s squared. Like I said, just simplify life by um, plugging in any things that do not ever change in the problem. And in this case, that 6 does not change. So now we need to take the derivative. 2x dx over dt plus 0, um, well, yeah, plus 0 equals 2s ds over dt. We can get rid of those 2s because we can divide the entire equation by 2 and it reduces. So let's see here. X. We don't have X, but we can figure out X because it's a side in a right triangle. Um, so if one leg is 6 and the hypotenuse is 10, I know that that leg at that instance is 8. How do I know that? Because it's the multiple of the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay? 6 is a leg and 10 is the hypotenuse, so it's a uh, 3 times 2, 5 times 2, so the other one's got to be 4 times 2. So I've got 8 times, uh, it wants the speed of the plane. Guess what? dx over dt is the speed of the plane because that's the, the path, the rate of change of that distance is the speed. Uh, S is 10, dS over dt is negative 400. So we divide both sides by 8. I'm going to divide by 8 before I multiply because 400 is a multiple of 8. Um, is that negative 50? Yeah, 40 divided by 8 is 5, so that should be negative 50. So dx over dt is negative 500. Um, but notice it asks for the speed of the plane. Speed does not account for direction. So that's the velocity of the plane. So the speed of this plane would be 500, let me check my miles per hour. Yep, it is in miles per hour. Would be its speed. Okay. To be honest, the most popular related rates questions are right triangles. 
and cones. Those are the ones that I see more than anything. That's not to say that there aren't others, uh, but those are the ones that I see most often. Uh, now, this is not on your paper, and it's not in your book, but this is actually something from the book. Um, here's an interactive example. This is exactly what we're looking for. Um, it's flying at a constant speed of 500 miles per hour. Okay, that's what we just figured out. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and it is going to change the distance between the plane and the station. So the plane's going to get closer to the station and you can see how these values are changing. So the distance is now 9.4. Uh, it shows the horizontal distance and then it shows the rate of change of the distance between the plane and the tracking station. So this is just a twist on the problem. Um, instead of saying that the distance is changing at a constant rate of 400, uh, this is saying that the speed is 500 miles per hour. That's constant. So the rate of change of the distance is, is it increasing or decreasing as we get closer? Well, what do we start with? We started with it at negative 400. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that would be increasing because it is becoming less negative. Um, It is increasing uh, because it is becoming less negative. Yeah, if it's directly above it, the distance isn't changing. <clears throat> uh, so this is just a little extra thing that I wanted to show you. Okay, we could have manipulated the problem. Um, to look at that as well. Okay, that is walking at a rate of five feet per second away from a light that is 15 feet above the ground. When he is 10 feet from the base of the light, we're going to answer two questions. At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? And uh, at what rate is the length of his shadow changing? Okay, so this is a right triangle problem, okay, because we have a uh, lamp post and a man that's walking away from the lamp post. So the lamp post is 15 feet. That is not changing. The man is six foot tall. That is not changing. He's walking away from the lamp post uh, at a rate of five feet per second. Um, so you don't have this on your paper, but the way that the book illustrates it is it illustrates that um, his shadow is here on the ground. It's created by the light that's coming directly over his head. So the tip of his shadow is right here at the edge of his triangle. He is walking at a rate of 5 feet per second. So that is the dx over dt. Because it's a horizontal rate of change. And the way that I have this picture oriented, he's moving in a positive direction, so that would be positive 5. When he is 10 feet from the base of the light. Okay. At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? What we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to set up um, some similar triangles. Okay, we're going to have to set up some similar triangles. So we have the lamppost to the man is 15 over 6. Now we have to consider the entire length of this side here. So that would be um, 
I can't plug the 10 in yet because that part is changing, okay? So we'll say that that is x plus, we'll say s is his shadow, okay? x plus s is his shadow, um, and that is over just s, his shadow. So I've got a big triangle here, okay? Big triangle. This length is the distance from the man to the lamppost, okay? And that's x. And that's corresponding to his PX over DT. Plus the length of his shadow would be the whole length of his body. Okay? The smaller triangle is the land, is the vertical, and the shadow is the horizontal. So that's where I get this equation from. Okay. So let's uh, cross multiply so that we don't have to use the quotient rule. 15s is equal to, or actually, you know what? Reduce that fraction first. 15 over 6 reduces by 3. So what's that? 5 over 2? Yeah. Okay, so 5s is equal to 2. I'm just going to leave the 2 in front. Okay, let's take the derivative. 5ds over dt is equal to 2 times dx over dt plus ds over dt. So ds over dt is what we're looking for. At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? Um, that's what we're looking for. I'm going to distribute that 2 because dx over dt is 5. Because I have ds over dt on both sides, so I need that on one side. So subtract the 2, at, 2 ds over dt from both sides, so we get 3 ds over dt is equal to 10. So divide by 3, ds over dt is 10 over 3. Okay, this is really part B.